What's up, people? Happy Tuesday. Hope all of you are having a great day so far. Um, for those of you that watch Days of Our Lives, my Days of Our Lives review is up. Check it out um, if you watched the episode today. If you didn't watch the episode today, check it out anyway. Anyway, so anyway, I know I'm going to keep saying that. Julian, he goes to Sonny's office or whatever to talk to Sonny about a truce, but Sonny is not having it. He don't want a truce with Julian. I don't blame Sonny, though, because Sonny does have somewhat of a cold. You know what I mean? Sonny doesn't sling drugs, and I can't really see him having a truce with Julian when Julian sells drugs. He pushes drugs, so I can't really see Sonny taking the bait. And doing a deal like that. He 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 did a truce with Johnny Zakara. That was different. See, Jason was the reason Johnny Zakara was still breathing. Because Sonny, you know, Jason would not let Sonny kill Johnny. Because Jason actually liked Johnny Zakara. He was cool with Zakara. That was until, you know, Johnny, you know, Jason found out that Johnny knew Dante was a cop. And didn't say nothing. Because Johnny was still a part of the Corinthos organization at the time. Um... So anyway, it was true to form. I, you know, um, Julian was dropping subliminal hints or whatever, saying, you know, some of what he was saying came off as a threat to Sonny. Even I picked up on that, but I don't think it was a direct threat from him to Sonny. I think it had more to do with fake loot than Julian. That's why he was, you know, throwing around little hints and stuff like that about it would be better for Sonny's family if they had a truce. I, I don't think he was threatening Sonny or his kids. I think it was a hint to him about the boss, about Julian's boss. I could be wrong, but I, that's what I'm that's what I got out of it. So anyway, Olivia and Ned were at the um, floating rib when Tracy storms in talking mad shit as usual, calling Olivia Bensonhurst bimbo and talking about somehow she would sue her and send her ass back to Brooklyn. I was like, really, Tracy, was all that necessary for you to throw jabs at her like that? Like, you're a 60 something year old woman. You're damn near 70. Come on now. You was too old for the nonsense. So, um, Ned finally shut Tracy the hell up long enough to tell her that Lulu was kidnapped and you know that hit Tracy hard because, you know, like she said, Lulu is like a daughter to her. She loved Lulu. So she kept trying to get in touch with Luke or whatever, but he wasn't answering the phone. So Ned offered the ELQ security team to locate Luke. And Tracy was pissed by that because she still feels like ELQ was her company. <sighs> Let me say this for the last time. Hopefully this is the last time I have to say this. Earth to fucking Tracy. Edward created that company 36 years ago. He created it for his family. You are not his only family member. He created it for you. He created it for Alan, Jimmy Lee, whatever other kids he had. He created it for his grandchildren, grandkids, great grandchildren. He created it for every generation of Quartermains. It's for the Quartermain family, not you. Damn, like woman, you're going to die one day. Then what? You're not going to be the CEO forever. Crying out fucking loud. It was his legacy. Create your own damn legacy. Stop bitching about ELQ every five seconds. It's not your company. It's the shareholders company. And you're not a stockholder. And that was because of your father. Duh. So anyway, she's sitting there drinking or whatever. Pitching a goddamn fit. And that's when Franco and Carly come in over here in a conversation. Because Olivia went to go call Sonny so they could meet up at the PCPD. And Ned was filling um, Carly in, but Carly wanted to call Sonny to tell him. But uh, they said that, you know, Olivia already filled, you know, um, filled him in on it. But he already knew. So Lucy is at the fucking PCPD harassing Scott to make a decision. This is what I don't get. Why does Scott have to make a decision? I thought initially he wanted to be with Lucy, but now he wants he's conflicted about who he wants because Bobby is back in the picture. This whole storyline is so dumb. We barely see any of this storyline, so I really don't care about it. Lucy is a dumb bitch because you torched 
your own fucking marriage to a guy who was in love with you. You ruined your marriage for Scott, who doesn't even he he's not even into you like that no more because he has another chick that he's interested in. And he's still interested in you, too. So now you're in a love triangle and she's demanding that he make a decision. But he keeps trying to tell her now is not the right time for him to make a decision like that because he's in the middle of a goddamn kidnapping case. So he can't deal with that. So Franco and Carly show up and Franco's trying to, you know, use the father card to get Scott to give him information. And Carly yelling at Scott. Asking Scott, what is he doing to bring Lulu home? Here's what I have a problem with. Why is she asking Scott? What is he doing to bring Lulu home? Last time I checked, Scott is not a police officer. He's not a detective. He's not the police commissioner. He's the district attorney. He puts criminals behind bars. He does not actually go out and hunt them. That's the police job. He's not police. So you should be trying to get in touch with Anna Devane and ask her that question, not the district attorney. His job is to put criminals away. That's his job. And until they get the actual criminal, there ain't really shit he can do. All he can do is give you the updates that he's getting from the police, which he is not the police. So Carly needs to tone that down. So Olivia and Sonny show up or whatever. And um, Carly is demanding that Sonny do something instead of just stand there or whatever. But Sonny keeps telling her, let Dante do his job, because in Sonny's mind, Dante's a good cop. Keep telling yourself that, Sonny. I understand he's your son, but let's not exaggerate here. I wouldn't call Dante a good cop. I would say he's decent or average at best. Hell, I seen Columbo do a better job. Hell, them motherfuckers down on the Andy Griffith show back in the day in Mayberry. Hell, they did a better job than Dante do. But that's neither here or there. Um, rest in peace, Andy Griffith. Rest in peace. Um, so anyway, did I say Mayberry? Okay. Um, so anyway, where was I? So yeah, she yelling at Sonny or whatever about him getting off his ass doing something. There ain't much Sonny could do. Hell, Sonny, I mean, you know, if Dante need his help, then he'll call and ask for a favor. For right now, this is a police matter, not a mob matter. Um, see, this is what Jax was talking about. Carly always go to the mob for help. That's why Jax couldn't stand being married to her no more. She always go to Sonny and Jason for help all the time. Like, you always run straight to the mob. Damn, bitch. Why don't you just become the godmother of the Corinthos organization already and just call it a day? Anyway, Franco found out that basically Carly lied and Bobby lied about spending. Remember that night she was sexing it up with Sonny and she lied and said that the, the glass of wine was Bobby's? Franco found out that that was a lie because Scott basically confirmed he did not have a nightcap with Bobby that night like she claimed. So now he's pissed or he looks a little pissed that Carly lied to him again. Um, so anyway, Dante and Nathan are at the cabin and the ICE fake agent is on the ground with a gunshot wound. Levi shot him. Um... And he, you know, starts talking or whatever, but he don't he don't give up a location of where they took Levi of where Levi took the girls. So they sent him to the hospital or whatever. He's still breathing for the time being. And they comb the fucking um, they search around the cabin for clues. And that's when they open a book and they find Frisco Jones name in there and a picture on the back with him. And it was circled on his face. So now they got an idea of what Levi might be doing. I'm ready for this kidnapping storyline to be over. I'm getting sick of it now. So anyway, Ava got Kiki and Michael over there. She trying to poison Michael with some goddamn mousse, chocolate mousse. And she put some, uh, duh, duh, duh. what's that chili powder? What the hell did she put in there? Cayenne pepper. She put something in that damn thing. And it was poison or whatever. But Michael smelt what she put in there. And when he was going to eat it, she stopped him. And then they started talking about how Luke was flirting with Kiki and that pissed Ava the fuck off. So when Michael was going to eat it, she Kung Fu chopped it out of it. She bitch slapped it out of his hand, knocked it all on the floor. So Kiki, so Julian comes in and Kiki and Michael leave to go to the hospital to check on Ava. I mean, not Ava, Alice. So Michael gets a reprieve. I already know they're not going to kill Michael off. I know that for a fact. Chad Duel is not leaving, but I already know they're not killing the character off. 
they would be stupid to even try to do some shit like that. So Ava, she decides to grab her laptop and video chat Luke to tell him off, you know, to cuss him out or whatever. But Julian tells her not to because it'd be bad in the end because she has no follow up plan. So Julian tells her the best course of action is to get the flash drive that proves Sonny shot AJ. Here's what I was thinking. Why don't Julian and Ava team the fuck up and kill fake Luke? Why not do it that way? It'd be easy. Then he can't retaliate from the grave and Julian can run the organization the way he wants to run it without having a boss. Problem solved. Um, That would be the smart thing to do. But of course, they're not going to do that Um, because they're dumb. And they don't think Julian and Ava are a much formidable, formidable tag team when they're united, because there's an old saying united. We stand divided. We fall so divided. They have not been doing a very good job being divided. But when they're united, they actually triumph. So why not unite? It makes perfect sense. But of course, you know, common sense doesn't run on soap operas these days. Um. So I think Ava should have had a better plan of going up against fake Luke, you know, threatening him or and telling him that Michael is still alive is not going to bode well for you or Kiki. I was actually hoping that the writers would have did something shocking and actually switched the chocolate mousses. So that way Kiki would have ate the poison instead. But I guess that was wishful thinking on my part. Um... What else the fuck happened on this episode? I don't know. It was a pretty dull episode to me. It wasn't really too much going on today. Um, so anyway, I hope all of you have a great day. See you tomorrow. Hope I'm not forgetting anything. But if I am, it wasn't that important. See you all later. It's hot as fuck. See you later.